this is organic in the sense that you've got an organic substance or an inorganic substance, either plant matter or mineral matter. And so when it's complex, when you've got a mineral that's complexed with an organic carrier, you've got an inorganic substance, a mineral, copper, for example, and instead of being complexed or combined with sulfur, so you've got copper sulfate, um, you've got copper proteinate. You've got it combined with an organic carrier, the protein or the polysaccharide. And the body is doing that for the horse or for the cattle anyway. They have to take that mineral and the body, they're, they're organically complexing it so that it can get into the digestive pathways. And what we've done is we've done that outside the body so that we make sure a higher percentage of it gets done in a way that the body can utilize it more efficiently. The probiotine uh, as a blend additive, it's not just a single thing. Uh, there's other companies that might put a single probiotic in, you know, one strain of a probiotic, or they might put in one enzyme, or they might put in something else. Uh, ours is a blend of things, and the three main elements of it are the prebiotic oligosaccharide to feed the beneficial bacteria. Now, that's kind of an exotic sounding term, but really what we're talking about is getting the feed in a condition that the beneficial bacteria can consume and then their numbers, their populations stay strong and healthy. And if the beneficial bacteria or organisms are in good populations, the pathogenic bacteria or the disease-causing ones can't get a foothold. They're always there, but through what we call competitive exclusion, the beneficial organisms, we keep them growing, keep them healthy, and the pathogenic bacteria, the disease-causing ones, can't get going. We're just trying to make that system as efficient as we can because we're a supplement and we're feeding the organisms in the digestive process so that they're in good health and they can do a better job processing all those big forage grass and hay and you know and the grains and everything we try to focus on the supplement it's because we're wanting to help them digest those better so we have the prebiotics we have the digestive enzyme array and the reason I say array is because it isn't just a single one. We have the fibrolytic, we have the amyletic, we have the proteolytic. And those are just fancy names for uh, amyletic is the ones that digest starch and sugar. The fibrolytic break down fiber. The proteolytic helps break down protein. So that's all what has to go on anyway. And uh, so we're enhancing that process. Fundamentally, what probiotine revolves around most is the growing of yeast. And we grow the yeast on a media of wheat and oats and barley malt and flax. And we use those as our energy source to grow the yeast, and so all the starch will have been consumed out of there. Mm -hmm. So we're not giving them any extra grain, we're not giving them any extra starch, but we're giving them that whole media that we raised it on. Well, we needed enzymes to process these uh, grains in order to grow the yeast, and the enzymes we stabilize when we're done without distilling, without cooking them. And that's a big part of why our uh, probiotine works so well, is we have already a fermented feed that is going into that four-legged fermenter and so our approach is to improve the, the microbial population in the digestive system. And if you've got a healthy microbial population, they do a better job digesting the feed. And then we talk about uh, the protein isolates. The fact that you are raising your yeast, and yeast is a very valuable protein source, 
when yeast grow, they excrete a waste product for them, but it's a neutralite for the digestive system. And, uh, and so as, as long as those aren't overcooked or overheated, they're going to work better for the animal. Now what happens is you've got three grains plus yeast plus flax. So you've got five different uh, amino acid profiles from each of those ingredients to broaden your amino acid profile in your feed. And whenever you do that, each, each grain has a little different amino acid profile. And you just give that animal more tools to meet subtle little needs. And, uh, and so it is where the digestive disruption issue, we don't have any of that because they've got a foraging animal that's been on hay or it's been on pasture and we supplement them with something that's very compatible with forages and they don't have to worry about sticking them with a bunch of sugar. The big problem that they have when they get that grain shock yeah. is that all of a sudden you have you know, a faster fermentation that's going on and you get an acidic condition and then that kills off other organisms. Not only are we not contributing to that, we're mitigating against it. And then, so healthy animals, the key, and we kind of reiterate this throughout, is we want to keep them healthy. And you want to keep them healthy in an easy fashion. You know, we, he's got so many problems for a competing kind of fermentation or a competing problematic digestion going on before it hits the hindgut. And then if it hits the hindgut with the wrong material or too much starch in particular, it just causes big trouble. Yeah. You even out that digestive process and the, the nutrient exchange goes better. You know, it's got a better ability for all those nutrients. If they're moving steadily through the digestive process, instead of maybe racing at one point or going unreasonably too slow at another point, it's just smoothly going through, the nutrient exchange is uniform. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so that's a big part of it.